following podcast contains mature language and adult discussions. I uh, keep checking my mailbox for a screener copy of Iron Claw. Kev, are they even such a thing anymore? Click this Kevin Nash podcast, I'm sure. I mean, I, I, I got some during like the, the like the awards, you know, you get them. But even now, it's it's all you get a, an envelope, and it's got some the download. Code. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And you, you, right. you got to watch it on a computer. Mm-hmm. And I, I was having a hard time getting them to even download on my on my smart TV. I'm not gonna sit here and fucking watch this. You know, that's my. You guys were, you know, we were all kind of talking about five o'clock, uh, on the phone today, uh, texting, and somebody says, to, you know, you guys were talking about uh, the Iron Claw. Uh, screener and i said fuck it'll be on it'll be on hbo max in three weeks you're <laughs> like, probably kinda, right and i mean that's just kind of my my whole thing i don't get the netflix um where they like put it like they'll put a movie out in the theater like a week before they they screen it on netflix you know why to be to qualify for an oscar it has to show in a theater so even if they do one screening of it that's why they bought i believe netflix bought the paris theater on 58th street manhattan near the plaza hotel uh so they exclusively so they can do a screening of all their original stuff so that it does qualify for an oscar i'm striking i believe that's the i'm striking (laughs) You know, Dom's at the screening tonight, so I guess he can give us the first review. But uh, look at this. I room. saw where uh, MJF was uh, was an executive producer on it. I didn't know that. Yeah, that saw uh, there was. They had some pictures. Did Dom Dom sent it on the uh, dirt sheet thing? MJF was was sit, was standing next to uh, next to, to some uh, WWE talent, Cena. right? Yeah, he was with MJF. Was 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 yeah, I was seeing him. Right. I like the fucking what is that velvet? What is uh, that? I think so. A little uh, a touch. Uh, what, kind of a fucking feel? leprechaun yeah. fucking feel there. Yeah. Digging the uh, it, it is harkening back to something specific. I'm trying to think. Not the Joker. I don't. I don't know what I'm getting. I'm getting a vibe. I like seeing a suit, man. He's motherfucker. very trim. He is very trim. Get turn it, he's, turning, he's turning into LBJ. But um, yeah, so you know, but he, look at this. We we have this this tremendous collective of artistic geniuses working on this show. Where's our wrestling script? Wrestling is is, is hitting mainstream media hard, and and we missed the boat on this. This could have been the the. Uh, turn the page, Bob Seger opening of the Click movie. I was, uh, I was, I was invited. No, to make one. Why aren't we on uh, behind these films? I think it's. I, I don't know, man. Like, if if, if if we have more collective film experiences, uh, I, no, I'm saying hair. this though. I, I'm saying this though. If you're going to, if you're going to make a film. And you, and somebody gives you ten million dollars, and it's you and I, and we sit down. Are you really gonna fucking make a wrestling film? Good point, and it's why I never <laughs> attempted to. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm not. But I mean, the low hanging fruit. It would have been effortless. I mean, everybody put over the wrestler to such a degree, and I was just like. It was to me. It was tragically sad, and that's all it was because there was no. 
yin to the yang. It was just, there was that one snippet that kind of showed some, um, some uh, stills or pictures or whatever of, of him in his heyday. But I mean, you know, unless he's coming down the aisle way in front of 35 to 40,000 people at a WrestleMania, and then you, you know, so you see where he came from and then you flash back and he's coming off the top in front of 300 people. That's, you know, you, you need, and you need that. Well, didn't especially they show, for people that, for people that don't know the life. Didn't they show like he was in the, like the, the Nintendo video game and, and all that. I think they, they yeah, but I mean, it, it just, a... it, to, to me, it just didn't, <clears throat> I left it with with uh, I mean I mean as you know I, I was seeing a lot of that uh as were you on the circuit doing shoot interviews and conventions and whatnot and you know Matt Bourne with yesterday's makeup behind his ear uh so you see that kind of stuff so it was kind of a I I did I you know how I left it I left it going Am I in this film the shitty promoter who gives a payday for the stories and in some way I'm part of an exploitative? I always saw myself as as putting these guys on a stage again uh, and, 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 and giving them uh, some way to be relevant if they hadn't been in a while. Um, in that market. But then I started to go, hey, was it exploitative maybe? And then I had pizza and I was fine. But for a minute I did think about that. I mean, you can only exploit those that can, that can be exploited, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's just. Did you watch anything this week? I know, uh, you hit any podcasts or, uh, um, I see. I actually, I, I was trying, I was trying to, 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 you know, everybody was, was telling me that, that Maven had a, a podcast and it does it, you know, it Who? Maven. Oh. And it gets some um, like several tough hundred enough, dollars. the tough enough winner. Yeah. He was, yeah. He, we were, we were in the, in the same locker room for a, a short period of time. And, uh, I always got along with him. He's a nice guy. He seems like a very nice yeah. guy. Yeah. And I know, I remember that he was his, he was losing his mother to cancer, and I'd already lost my mom. So I, we had that, you know, kind of thing that was between us. Um, but I, wa- he, he did, he, I watched him um, because at nighttime, I'll, turn, I'll, I'll put YouTube on my, on my big screen on my smart TV and I'll just, I'll watch like, you know, some different workouts that like pro bodybuilders are doing that just for motivation for what I'm going to get up the next day. So I was watching some, and, and to me, my hardest thing is his legs because my knees are so beat up. So I'm always looking for, you know, some guy that's, you know, it has a little bit older. That's, that's, you know, Work, working his way around injuries. And I saw uh, on the bottom, it, it was it was Maven. And I said, oh, there's that, you know, there's, there's one of his things. And it was, he was uh, going to show, gonna show the, 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 the layman how to gig. Has he ever gigged? I don't know. Uh, obviously, hey, uh, according to this, I watched. According to this, he has. Okay. And um, so he, the first thing he says is, you know, he, I, I don't. He's got the weirdest accent. It's just like that. It just, and I remember him talking, but it's just he has such a weird. He just, it just, I, I just can't even. It's almost like Chappelle doing a white guy. Uh, it's like a, it's like a, a, a weird voice that that kind of comes out of him. Maybe it's just because he's country. I don't know. Mm. What is he anyway? I I don't I I don't know if he's black white. I don't know. He's, he's you know 
I think he. I think yeah. So, I think he's 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 uh, he's part black and black and part white. I don't know. I I, I, I... his coloring is very similar similar to like a Savio Vega, but uh, but uh, Savio's Puerto Rican and, and Maven is not based on that accent. Right. Just, uh, no. So please tell me tell me tell me what Maven said on how to gig. Now this is an Abbey we're getting the advice from. No, this is yeah. Mine. So he the first thing he says is he, he, he yeah, I'll just kind of just you know kind of thumbnail this. So the first thing he says is you'll need three things: a tape, a razor a blades, and a head, and a, a, a fucking pair of scissors. Oh. And he said that um, he says you'll need. Uh, a straight edge, double double edged razor blade. So like you know the old you know your dad used it. He dropped yeah. in and screwed the fucking gimmick. So uh, I'm thinking going. Why the double edge? Because like, you're going to cut. You one only of use them. you only use one half of it. Right. But it's thinner. It's my. It's it's you know that it's it's ah, just I see. The, the, if you used one edge. You know, then you'd have it's it's a thicker you know it's a thicker blade. Gotcha. When I broke in the first time I got color, I went over to the people that where the the paramedic box was, and I took a disposable sh- scalpel out of the fucking out of the bag. That'll work. And I just fucking used the scalpel blade because. As many times as I've operated on in my life, I've always, you know, I, I, I would figure that they would use a scalpel and not a fucking double edged blade, you know, razor blade, like that, that. That like to me, it's just like is like like I think me and Maven were in the same locker room in maybe two thousand and five or something like that. I don't know, but it's like I'm thinking like, where did like where where did you broke in? where did you break in where where did you break like Continental look. Oregon, where'd you break? I, like Jesus, I bro, I broke in on Tough Enough. Oh, uh, where they showed you the finer points of yeah, gigging. Yeah, exactly. I'm thinking like, now let me ask you: when you're trained, and not no, today, they, they don't but teach back you. then, did did, it, no. did the old guys ever talk about gigging? No. no, Barry Barry Wyndham taught me how to gig. Showed me how to gig. Jody and never it, talked. To no. You about it. Wow. No. Nope. So go ahead. So Maven. So so he, so, so they he t- he tapes his wrist first. He tape and he tapes his wrist like Tom Zink on Twenty Three Somas. I mean, it just kind of just. <laughs> and uh, they, you know, they, they, with that country draw, just you know, uh, you cut your you, you put it here and you, you know and you. He's going over the, you know, and to me it's just like you take white, you take the tape and you just, whatever you want exposed, that's where you put the, the tape on. Then you like, like have like a little tiny, uh, like, a, like a tip of a shark's tooth. And that's what you're going to, you're going to, you know. I taped mine in my normal wrist. And then, where where I u- would normally put my 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 tape, I would just s- stop that tape, and then put a tab. Then peel it back and put my 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 gig there, and I always gave a second gig to the to the uh, ref. I remember you telling me that. That's right. In case you lose yours. Yeah. Or, or see another thing you can do is. Is you can go too long, and it dry up, and you not get it good enough. But he said, stick it and turn it and push like, like, like blow down like, Ugh. and that's what you do. I was taught to fucking. I I, I mean I could feel. I'll I'll and, and the, the the number one I have to give him. Kudos, because if he did, if he did get color, fucking, he was always bald. Yes. So when you're bald, man, that's that's a completely different. I always had that long ass hair. Right. So, 
I could always, but you know, I, I, you, you can flip and then get the gig as you're getting up from, you take a bump, you're getting the gig as you're getting up. You know, so you got the gig in your hand and you turn, and as you turn, they're swinging a chair, you get the hand up, and as the hand gets up, boom, you can gig, right. and then flat back, and then you just got to, then you just roll to your, your, your stomach, and then just push, and then once you see it coming on the mat, and you know you got it, then you turn, and then you sit up, and then that way there, once you sit up, then you, you know, you got the, you got the color. And, um. When I was a kid, I used to watch for this. One of the things I did watching their matches was to see where they got the gig. Um, the camera would usually catch it, sometimes not if they crawled under the apron or something. But uh, Morocco always taped it in his finger. So when he was ready to go, he just, he just like push it up through the tape. Like you're saying, the little point will just pop through the tape and he would just hit it like that. You know, Hulk used to. It, it, would Hulk put a blade in his mouth. Shiki used to do that too. I asked him about it. I said, "Are you fucking crazy? Of all the places you could put it, you never cut yourself. You never." He no, looked at me because, like I was crazy. But look how they work. Blade in his mouth. You got to look how they work. Like I, I could have put it in my mouth because I wasn't fucking. You know, but you're sure as fuck not going to put it in your mouth and do fucking moon salts. Yeah, I guess. But I just no, I do I, remember I, Hogan would do the tape too sometimes, right? Though he would do the the wrist tape and that he would always de deposit it in his trunk i didn't know what, that it, what do we got this here? is punk caught on camera oh that was that stabbing was... himself in the head yeah like, like a crime scene now he should just use a pickaxe at that point the point of the blade is to drag right to to get a well to me well, it worked like... i guess so what yeah. am I saying? But... but it's like I don't know. I mean, it, it obviously he, he he was he he got busted. Yeah, no, it worked. I'm gonna watch. No, Ravens I mean he got tonight. busted. They, he was. We actually have. Oh, caught! He got caught. Yes, on he camera. got caught. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think that's the you know. If you had the fucking guy, I mean, you might as well have the guy hold your hair out of the way and fucking get giggy himself. You know. Send him a link tonight to the Maven one so he can learn. Yeah. Did Maven do it on camera? No. No. Oh. No, but, he, but then, he put, did. then he put like nine pieces of tape over the top of that. And I was just thinking, I was thinking like, wow, man, that's, fuck, you just, you went through a whole bunch of shit to, to fucking get color. It was just like, and the thing is, like, I, I, I didn't get color much, but when you get older, you realize like, man, you get color, you don't have to fucking do shit. All you got to do is fucking sell because you're in trouble. Right. I go to Europe and fucking work some, some fucking guy over there and just fucking, you know, a bigger guy and just fucking, you know, roll out and fucking roll out. Three minutes of the match, roll out. I just say, post me. <laughs> Boop. <laughs> How did more guys not get, like, staph infection and stuff? Because the mats are filthy. I guess because you're good. It, you, you know, you're, you're 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 bleeding pretty good. And I always cleaned it with fucking pro hydrogen peroxide. And, you know, put you know, I, I I treated it like a wound. I didn't just fucking, you know. Did you open up the same? Like, if you had a, a yes. run against somebody, you would just open up the same yes. one, right? Well, I would never. I, yeah, but it was. <clears throat> I'd only do it in, in real specific, you know, places. Like I could probably name the t the amount of times I did it on a, a televised or a pay per view, mm -hmm. probably ten times. WWE and WCW. Yeah. Hmm. Hell in the Cell with with Paul, I got color. Mm -hmm. I got color with Booker T in a in a cage when I lost the title to Booker. Um, I think I was Buffalo. I always thought when the black guys would blade, um, it was it was anticlimactic because you couldn't really like when JYD he would he would frequently, uh, not frequently, but I mean, he he would he would sometimes do it in his dog collar matches and stuff. And um, 
so I always thought like JYD would wear the white tights. That was a good, that was a good calling card. I wonder if that was deliberate to get it to show up. Cause sometimes if you're far away, it's tough to see just because of the pigmentation. Yeah, I, 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 and I just think, it, I, th nice I think that goes from, 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 he would from, gig his con. from the, from guy to guy, because it's, just, it's, a, it's almost like in the NBA when you, you know, you see the black guys that are, you know, everybody's got, got ink. And there's some, you know, the, there's just some guys that are just a rare, you know, you know, of course their pigmentation is just a lot darker, mm -hmm. but the majority, the 99% of the guys, it's just, they're fucking, their ink looks the same as on a white boy. It just, you know, it's like they're, tan, you know, they just have like a tan, mm. you know, they're just, so. Some feedback from last week. I know official fingers MC was watching because he says, Sean, mate. Since we just got a Cornet Mega Cut over on the KC Vault, any chance of a Nash Mega Cut, please? Corny and Nash are my favorite guests you ever had. Well, and the Dundee shoot, that was insane. They're such different people, but I could listen to them both for hours. Well, we're going to tell you something fun for the Click This TV listeners uh, and some of Kevin's work on uh, the Kayfabe commentary shows. Not today, but I will tell you shortly we're putting something together for the uh, clickthistv.com fans something exclusive um you can go to clickthistv.com and just for 9.99 a month get all of this exclusive footage we're talking about double j jeff jarrett here to tell you about savewithconrad.com you've heard conrad talk about the total non-stop savings they provided current homeowners but did you know Conrad and his team can also help my world listeners become homeowners? They make buying a home easier than getting the bag after a good housekeeping match. But don't take the last outlaw's word for it. Franklin Dove, Orlando, Florida. After listening to all of Conrad's podcasts and hearing the different stories that he shared, I felt the time was right for me to explore buying a home again and uh, reached out. And one thing led to another and finally closed last week it was excellent uh everything flowed smoothly from my first contact i just put in the initial request online francis reached out we started the application process got the approval moving holly was great larry thompson was amazing everything was smooth communication was perfect really it was a, a much better experience than anything that i could have imagined my name is Franklin Dove in Orlando, Florida, and I got into my dream home thanks to SafeWithConrad.com. That's right. In my world, it doesn't get any better than five stars. Don't let your landlord get over on you. Walk out on that bad deal and stop throwing your money away on rent today with SafeWithConrad.com. That's right. It's SafeWithConrad.com. NMLS number 65084, Equal Housing Lenders. Woo! Greatest 515. Came to the comments to see if anyone else was upset about all the politics and Sean. LOL. I had to cut it off at like 30 minutes because I just don't care about politics. It's not like y'all are speaking on political topics. No one else is. It's the same hot topics. Whatever's hot in the news is what Kevin speaks on. But heaven forbid wrestling fans want to know about hot wrestling topics. They dismiss those things like they don't matter. We spent an hour talking about punk two weeks ago, but you know what? But, but the thing is, it's like number <clears> one, <throat> it's our show. Yeah. Well, well let me finish. We're, I'm not done. There's more. He's got more. Kev, hold on. Okay. They dismiss those things like they don't matter. It's whatever. Newsflash, guys. These political topics don't matter. We will never see these politicians, and we're never going to the Middle East. We really don't care. We do go to wrestling shows. We do stand on lines and buy merch. Not me, but we as fans. Wrestling's better than politics. I listen to Kevin talk about dropping a load over politics. I blame Sean. So this Your is clearly fault. my fault. Oh, well, if he's blaming you, I'm in complete agreement. Yeah, I was going to say, you, you, you <laughs> might want to wait to defend to defend yeah. us until this is done. This is no, clearly I just, my fault. I look at it, and it's just like... I. I was like, you know, like I, I read so many things. And I, one person said to me, like, uh, "You're, yeah, you're a capitalist millionaire." You know, I got a '93 Bronco. I just traded in an 18-year-old fucking Mustang with 140,000 miles on it, 
And do I, what do I get? Do I get a fucking 2023? No, I get a 2020 that's got 4,000 miles on it because it saves me fucking 17 grand. It's like, don't tell me I don't know how fucking much eggs cost. Like, don't tell me I don't know how much fucking gas cost. Oh, and it doesn't matter to you because you can go out with fucking, you and Sean can go out and buy bottles of wine. Well, multi hundred dollar bottles of wine. We bought two fucking, two bottles of wine that were 215 bucks a piece. And it was the first time our wives and us as a couples hung out together and fuck, it's it's like. I will say, I do have to say, Kevin does not live extravagantly. Fuck no. He anybody uh, that knows me, he will spend money on a good wine. You do have some passions that you will spend a few bucks on. Yeah, but I mean, and I'm, wine I'm, is I'm, one of them. I drink. Uh, no more than a bottle of wine a night. And I used to, I mean, I used to drink a bottle of wine every night. I just don't anymore because I just don't think that my liver needs, at 64, my liver needs to <coughs> to fucking, you know, to cleanse that much fucking alcohol out of my system. Right. And on top of that, it's a known fact that you can't burn fat and alcohol at the same time. So your body, when you go to bed, is going to burn the alcohol, and you're going to wake up, and you're going to be fatter. So if you start to get fucking chunky, and you drink every night before you go to bed, you got to cut the alcohol out, period. So I know this, and it's just like, you know, you look down, and, and since COVID, man, I think everybody fucking put on that, that weight during COVID because everybody wore fucking sweatpants and fucking, you know, nobody wore fucking, you know, you weren't putting a suit on. You and all of a sudden, you know, you put a, 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 pair, a pair of pants that you wore before the COVID, and you go, Jesus, these are tight as fuck. <laughs> so. Um, James Adams, uh, the best parts of this podcast consistently are all of the topics that do not involve wrestling. Just listening to Nash and Oliver shoot the shit about whatever's on their minds is great content. Appreciate you guys. Great show. Thanks. So this is more to the point, uh, Mister. What was it? Greatest five fifteen. See, it's you know it's a buffet. There's a little bit here for him. There's a little bit there for you. We do talk about wrestling, so you're not a regular listener if you if you don't think we do talk wrestling. Um, we prefer not to. We talked about doing a second show that was that was just talking about wrestling, so that we can have fun here on Mondays. No, it's just it, it is. So let's let's take. Um... <clears throat> Uh, this past Monday night's Raw, because that's it was two days, three three days ago. So I bet I bet both games Monday night. So I, I had money on them. So I watched the games, and then as the games as as the Miami game looked like I was I was I was gonna just eat it, I I turned on Raw. Much to my chagrin, or I should say, much to my my pleasure, I, I ended up winning both games. I took the. Uh, you took the, what you thought was the shittiest bet. Yeah, I took the four. I took the four. I took the four and eight teams. I thought they would get fucking wiped out, and they ended up covering. Uh, the merch you mentioned, Punk's merch, and the six hundred thousand dollars in twenty four hours, or whatever the statistic was. I pulled. I remember. I used to get the. Um, they might have been in the WWE magazine or in the program, but they had their little catalog section and uh, the, of the, the T-shirts. So I wanted to pull up some of the classic T-shirts of, uh, of days gone by. I'd like to give each one a, a rating from A to F. Um, this is circa 1986, so we'll have the, uh, the JYDs just, and just, the George Steels. Let's just say, would you wear the shirt or not? Let's do that. All right, so Captain Lou, if you can zoom into that one. And I do love that they did show that there is a woman's Captain Lou shirt available for the women out there that wanted uh, to advertise that they were Captain Lou fans. Um, I would you have know, worn I, the Captain I, Lou shirt. I have to I say would. something, and, and this is I, I, like all the shoot interviews and yeah, you, all the shoot interviews that you did, 
and all these different people and all of a sudden like people take um sayings that that and we all we all did it because like i'm not here to make make friends i'm here to make money mm -hmm. and we we've you know we the click said that but you have to you have to always i think at some point you have to give the author credit that was chief j strongbow chief j strongbow was the one that said uh you guys you can make uh friends or you can make money that's mm -hmm. up to you yeah so that was chief j and lou albano was there's only two things in this business that's real money and the miles that's brilliant that's lou that's 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 captain lou so want to make sure that that's thrown out there because I've, I've, I've watched a few people cutting promos and, and, and doing their fucking deal lately. And But you always credited Lou from back on my shows. Uh, yeah, you, always. you always gave Lou the credit for that, for that line. If I use somebody's line, I, I, <clears throat> I say it as so-and-so would, would say, and then I would, I would say it. So I'd wear the captain. Well, I would just, would as well, would, right? I would, yeah, I absolutely would, would especially now. Yes, right, and and the, the caricature is so flattering. I'm anything, sure. yeah. anything with 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 any kind of Oriental uh, writing on it is is a, is a fucking huge plus. The I have Ricky a God, Steamboat I, one you're I have about. a Godzilla tank top that I wear to the gym occasionally, but it's it's an actual Japanese Godzilla tank top that's that's all in ja all the prints in Japanese. That's like that's Dude, like if you wore that to one of those Comic Cons. Oh yeah, but no. This is this thing fucking smells like. This is one of those fucking tank tops that you put it on. By the time you get into the gym, it smells like kitty litter. It's had so many fucking. But but it's one of those. All the more reason they'd want it. Yeah, it's one of those ones on it. where it's like it's a it's it's a chest day workout, and it's when you're in shape. You can't wear it when you're not. I mean, you know, this is it's you got to have your shit. I've I've I've. I've Tuned. I'm, I'm. I'm slowly tuning, cutting the alcohol down, picking up the cardio. You know, just cutting the carbs back a little bit, eating a lot more grass-fed beef. Get this done, especially now knowing that the end of the month is the rumble. I got. Yeah, I got to show up. Fucking end of January. Yes, you're on the. Got to show up. Fucking looking good. Now, uh, the Ricky Steamboat shirt, you did say you'd wear it because it has the Japanese writing on it, even though he was Hawaiian. Um, I, now, I think that is not a very good shirt for... Well, his, 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 his wife's also from the University of Tennessee, so... Bonnie? Or, or there's a new wife. Bonnie was the one he was married to back when yeah, you would have been wife. working with him. Um, so Okay, so scroll down a little here. Now, here are three... We have the George Steele, I'm an animal lover. Uh, I can't quite see what the, I guess that's a caricature of him. That's his head. In the and, O. In the O. Um, I guess if I was a George Steele fan, that's kind of cute, animal lover. Um, I do I do like that one. I don't know I, don't know, I would have worn after it. Watching, after watching, I watched an interview Brett did, and he was saying, Brett was saying what a motherfucker he was when he turned. Uh, agent, agent, from, yeah. From the minute, from like, from the minute he turned from boy to agent, if I can, what a motherfucker! And I, I remember, man, I remember, I was at the TV that, oh, like Owen and Brett were like a minute late, but we were at some shit fucking like small college, and there was no parking, and like everybody got there and plenty of time. You just could not. There was no parking for us. Mm -hmm. and that's why they were late. And I remember Owen had on a pair of high techs, and he kicked his foot through an uh, athletic uh, there was an, a athletic office that was downstairs that had that glass with the, the metal in it, mm -hmm. and he kicked his fucking foot right through it. I'm just thinking, like, wow. In uh, Waltman's book, he talks about uh, one night when Steele was the agent, uh, when he handcuffed his fucking bag to the fucking no. light that was it? Oh, fucking Owen handcuffed handcuffed 
fucking it was the we, suitcase. We, the Halliburton. We were going. Yeah, we were going on fucking. It was the, it was like the last thing before Christmas. Like you know, you're three days off for Christmas, and um, it was uh, he was looking for his bag and fucking he had he had fucked with Owen that day too. And I think Owen came by and goes, "Is that your bag?" It was handcuffed to the pipes. To the pi- and I'm, I'm talking yeah. about fucking like there was a ladder in that room that couldn't even come close to where that pipe was. I have no idea. I don't know. Fucking Owen jumped and it fucking shimmied out on that pipe and did it. He probably did. Yeah. Right. But Sean was saying he got out of the ring with someone, had a hot match. I forget who it was. And Steele is dangling a stopwatch. And Walton was like, "What?" He's like, you owe me a minute. You were short. I mean, he was that kind of dick. At times. I remember when fucking he got, we got him, we, 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 that uh, famous uh, picture in the back of the bus that's got a, like the, the attitude yes. here is sitting in the back of the bus. And we made, we, we, uh, made him take a hit. Yeah. We made, First. we made, we made fucking, we made steel fucking smoke weed. And then he, we, we got back to the hotel and he was fucking swapping spit with some fucking, some rat. That's and, in the uh, <laughs> Yeah. And Scott fucking, Scott got it on video. Yeah. You weren't going to have a problem with George again. <laughs> no. And then fucking when, when, when Scott got, Scott like flew home to Tampa and he, he like saw it, like George's wife was there to pick him up or whatever. And he fucking Scott just like stopped. And looked over till fucking George like made eye contact with him and Scott just shook his head. And then the next set of TVs, he walked up to George and said, and that was our last set too, I think. He said, um, I couldn't even look at you, and you with your wife. I was so disgusted. Scott would fucking <laughs> dick. <laughs> he was so hurt. Fuck, man. Uh, the JYD shirt I would not wear, um, and the uh, what's the, what's 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 below it? Is it just a dog? It's a, it's a dog with like a a hat, I guess. I don't know if it resembles uh, JYD or JYD. Uh, looks good in that. That's a hell of a picture, of JYD there. Yeah, sure. And uh, Santana says Ariba Santana. They just coming up a little a little short. Like the the Albano caricature is great. Now the Macho scroll down. The Macho Man one. That's a classic with that's the glasses, classic, right? Yeah. His reflection in his glasses, you have to wear that. It's classic. Jake the Snake's kind of cool. The S is the snake. Nah. Morocco uh, with the wave. I know he surfed, but he was also like a, a pretty badass villain. And Morocco with a giant wave is a terrible design for a heel. Yeah, I was a wolf ago. The, 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 of all of those shirts, the, the only one I would would sport um, to a convention would be Macho. Macho, right? Yeah, that's a classic. And they still sell it. Get it before Christmas. Yeah. Well, Kev, um, it is time for the tap out. Uh, we're going to see how long. <coughs> oh, God, that last one was brutal. You can stay with this the guy playing that. Somebody suggested that was a hurdy gurdy. So I guess that's what that's called. I was don't that know. The, my... so, the, that, 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 was that Donovan that's saying it's that? Strange. <laughs> it's a mellow hurdy-gurdy yellow, man? I think that might have been. No, oh, hurdy gurdy. Uh, no, you're the right. There was hurdy man. Well, this segment is, of course, sponsored by Blue Chew, our longest um, advertiser here. You know why they cool. stick with us? A little, 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 little play them? on words there. Exactly. Longest. Exactly. The longest, longest, longest guy in the room. It works is why. Uh, the segment is sponsored by our friends at Blue Chew. If you're talking about sex, guys, remember the days you were ready to go. You can increase your performance. Get that extra confidence. Um, they're chewable tablets that blue chew will send you okay it's a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as viagra cialis and levitra chewable tablets and literally a fraction of the cost take them anytime day or night plan ahead just be ready when the opportunity arises okay best part all done online you 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 no doctor's office visits here no awkward conversations so you're literally logging on to bluechew.com 
consulting with one of their licensed medical providers. And once you're approved, the prescription's issued and it's in your mail in days in discreet packaging. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sites. That's what it's all about, guys. Give it a chance and we're going to give you the perfect opportunity here because your first month will be free. That's right. Try Blue Chew for free when you use our promo code NASH at checkout. Just pay $5 for shipping. That's bluechew.com. Promo code NASH. Receive your first month free. Visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the tap out. Now, since this is wrestling related, this show, um, I thought that we would do um, we would do what what might be the worst wrestling match ever. We'll see. It's billed as such. It's an indie match. I tried to find out uh, to, to credit the Federation, I'll <coughs> say in finger quotes Federation, or the talent i'll also put that in finger quotes and i couldn't get anything on it so uh kev how much of this match uh would you be able to uh, uh to withstand we will uh, we will do the play-by-play for anyone who's uh listening to us in their car or on their commute on the train yeah just drop the volume in there a little bit there's really nothing do you remember the one we hear. watched it was uh oh andre B- baba and uh, and andre that I would not tap on that because I couldn't believe what I was seeing. So I, I, I needed to continue watching. But let's see this one here. Okay, let's go. Um, I only have a hun- an hour. I'm sorry. I only have a minute and 40 seconds of this confident that you'll be tapping well before that. Um, okay, so in the ring right now, just drop that volume. We absolutely don't need some some vicious kicks. Uh, there is, I guess, a whip to the ropes and uh, a poor clothesline. Um, now, I want to point out, I thought at first when I watched this, okay, a half-hearted Irish whip uh, misses and then some gut shots. Now, there's a guy with a mask. I thought there, that he was like a guest referee. No, he's standing there waiting to take that stunner. That stunner. Which was unbelievable. Now, this ref is going to have to get down and count multiple times, the poor son of a bitch. Um, he's well out of shape. Um, now, so that masked man that I thought was a ref was literally just... Now, this guy has also been standing in the corner waiting. Here, here comes here's my, the one-handed headlock. That's believable. Kevin, you're staying with this a lot longer than I thought you would. You're waiting oh, for I, I, I a just, DDT. No, I just you you because you, you're talking. Otherwise, I don't want to be rude, but you can turn this shit off. Okay, a, anytime you want to. Okay. I mean, fuck. Where did what, what, that, that, this? Uh, how did this? I couldn't how, find. How was it deemed the worst uh, match of all time? It was titled that on on YouTube. Guess I didn't see Oz Kazmar. <laughs> Now, sometimes when you would be at an indie show, uh, I'm sure guys say, hey, will you watch my match, right? That's kind of like a thing, right? Now, if that goes on and some and, and one of those guys has asked you to watch the match, do you have to try to find something constructive to say so as not to ruin the dream? Or are you just going to tell them to, to apply at UPS? I, but I, I think that that's the quality of the, it, like, not to be a dick or anything, but fucking, if you have those guys on the card, you, I'm not on the card. <laughs> I, I cost too much. <laughs> like you. Well done. Well played. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm just saying that that, that you know, um, I always would would get there and there'd be the, uh, you know the five-on-five five tag match that would start the night and they'd, you know, they'd give them eight minutes and everybody would get fucking 23 false finishes in and they'd come back and say, what'd you think? And I'd be like, what was the story you were telling? Yeah. Yeah, like, what, what was, like, like, nothing hurts, it's a complete work, like, what, what, what's the story? Right. So... Um, oh, it is time for, um, oh, you're doing a little of the Cody. I'm just little. anything now. I just, you don't, that's, I'm, everybody has to have, um, 
Like everybody's kind of doing the fucking Thor thing. Doesn't Roman like do the fist down and then Punk did the fist down? Oh, okay. Cody right. does the fist down. Is that like is that like the new what is that? Is that the new this in the corner? Basically, yeah, it's become universal, whereas yeah. at one time it might have been a signature of somebody. Now it's if you're a wrestler, See, I, that, that, you're doing that. that. So I like Orton's. Orton's is just like so classic because it's his. It was his, it's his you know, he came back and did it, and I was just like, huh, thank you. All right. All right, everyone, stop sending money to big insurance companies that profit off of not paying your bills. You pay into insurance forever, and they do everything they can to not pay for what you need them for. You know what's going on with the insurance racket out there? Listen, how about this fact? Did you know that 48 million claims on Obamacare last year were denied? That's one-fifth of the claims that are going to get rejected. Do you want to take that chance? Health insurance sucks. It's confusing, expensive, and frustrating. There's a better way. Welcome to the alternative. Crowd health was created to get rid of the headaches of health insurance. Crowdfunding is the future, folks, for $175 for an individual or $575 for a family of four or more. You'll get access to a community of people who are willing to help out in the event of an emergency. You'll also get telemedicine visit, visits, discounted prescriptions, and more. All this without Doctors' networks getting in the way. Crowd Health was created to get rid of the headaches of health insurance. Let Crowd Health help with your health care needs. You can get started today for just $99 per month for the first three months when you use the code WRESTLE to get the health care you deserve. Crowd Health is not insurance. Learn more at joincrowdhealth.com. That's joincrowdhealth.com and use the code WRESTLE, W R E S T L E. To get started today for just $99 a month for the first three months. Thank you, Crowd Health, for helping folks with their medical issues taken care of. Yeah. Florida man or Jersey guy. Everyone's been waiting uh, for this moment in the show. Kev, um, you're, you're on a bit of a roll again. Um, Two headlines for anyone who's new to this one, uh, both actual headlines, one, um, the workings of a Florida man and one, the workings of a Jersey guy. And Kevin, just by the activities can usually tell which is which. Okay, the first headline, uh, we're, we're nearing Christmas here. This will be premiering on the 18th. So I figured we'd go a little, a uh, couple of headlines, give you the uh, the holiday feel. Man gets agitated by neighborhood Christmas parade, fires several gunshots. And um, man charged with decapitating 74-year-old mother. I'm going to go uh, gunshots, uh, Florida man, decapitation, Jersey. Was this just too easy or what? No, you, it's you, just you didn't fucking, even breathe between. Well, because red states fucking if you don't have, if you don't fire a gun, it's against the law. Let's uh, bring up uh, the uh, Florida man here. Uh, cha -cha -cha. Let's take a look at our friend. Plus, uh, there's nothing that there's nothing that that is Florida about. Uh, is Christmas about Florida? Like you get at like you drive someplace and there's like you know somebody's got like fucking a bunch of lights on and they're blind you and shit. And you're like fuck, man, it's seventy three degrees. Yeah, I guess that is weird down there. Yeah, I've it is. There's a there's a weirdness. The holiday. There's a weirdness to it. You see, up here it's all about like the whole vibe changes, and it's yeah. You go to the little village and walk through the snow, have some cocoa, and put yeah, your right. boots on, your nice jacket, your shopping and stuff. Down there, it's just eighty degrees. My so wife is is, is Miss Christmas. Oh, that's like that's she's just she loves Christmas, but not. I mean, since tea, we both are like whatever. No, I know, I, I get it. Yeah, like come up here. We'll 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 go to Del Frisco's no, and go see right, the man. trick. No, it's we'll, we'll, we'll yeah. pass. No crowd, nothing, nothing. Crowds of thousands uh, walking down Fifth. Did Avenue? you see? Did you see the fucking deal they had? It was on Instagram the other day. They said. Don't go to New York City for, for for Christmas, and it looked like 
fucking New Year's Eve times 30 of just people wandering around New York City? Well, what they did, though, and that's what they might have been filming, they closed down Fifth Avenue between, like, where the tree is and where, yeah. like, Saks is and everything, where people walk around. So they opened the streets so that it's you can, because it is, it's it's madness. It's unbelievable. When, when the street is open and you have to wait to cross. Well, when they, clo- when they closed down of- that Times Square area for for the summertime, you know, when they when they make that more pedestrian friendly. Yeah, that, they actually, that's, yeah. That's crazy as fuck, too, down there. Yeah. But it was it was just too hard with, with all the cars and stuff. And so I was kind of glad. I go at night. I go late, get a nice dinner, walk by the tree. I mean, see the, it's a tree. I don't, but, you know, it's ceremony. So I see the tree, see the light show at Saks. Walk down Fifth Avenue. Everything's closed. You do still have a lot of people. Hit St. Patrick's Cathedral. Maybe I actually, last year I told you this, I lit a candle for tea in St. Patrick's Cathedral at Christmas. And um, continue down, get down to 57th Street by the plaza, look at the windows in Bergdorf Goodman and Tiffany. But I do it late so that there's a lot less of a crowd. Anyway, Douglas Moore is our friend in Florida who was charged with uh, six counts of aggravated assault with a firearm, reckless discharge of a firearm, and using a firearm under the influence of alcohol. You don't say. Little Duck Dynasty uh, auditioning right there. Um, The photo. Uh... It was the uh, 4100 block of County Road 218 in Middleburg, Clay County Sheriff's Office said. How do you have, how do you have, they're acting like it's, it's like New York City on the 33rd block of County Road. County Road 218. (laughs) (laughs) The seventh cow that you passed. Exactly. The the fourth international harvester, take a left. This actually looks like the, uh, one of those AI morphs of Steve Kaufman and anyone in ZZ Top right there is what that looks like, that photo. Um, And then, of course, let's go see our friend um, from Jersey who beheaded his mom. Uh, Let's see, this one, uh, okay. I got a feeling he's going to have Betty Davis eyes. He's got a Frankenstein forehead is what he's got. Ocean City, New Jersey, charged with murder, decapitating his mother. That's Jeffrey Surgent. Early mean Mark Calloway. A little bit, right? <laughs> a little bit of Taker. A little, little t- t- Taker's fucking uh, stepbrother. Um, according to court documents, the 911 call came at around 4 p.m. Um. He, He's uh, even got the bulletproof vest on for his his fucking uh, yeah he does his, for the photo. He's got yeah for his head, head shot. When police arrived at the apartment building where Jeffrey lived on Sixth Street, they discovered Sergeant Nude lying on top of his mother's decapitated body. Uh, wait a minute, there's, there's a lot more to this story than than decapitation. I have to read the headline as it exists, but I do wish that was somewhere in the headline. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking fucking, you know, mom said no. Oh, yeah. Oof. So, um. Have yourself uh, a merry little what Christmas. you guys are doing for the holidays out there, but uh, here there's some suggestions. Uh, the old, the old. What I think Jeffrey could have used. The, passing the Yule Log. What, what I think our friend Jeffrey Surgeon could have used is maybe a little bit of the get blitzed lit aid, which would have Ooh. calmed his ass down, and maybe he would have sat and watched some television with mom. Our friends Mickey Cartoons. Ray Sinatra and Courtney, his lady, uh, bring you the get blitzed lit aid. It's nano infused Delta 9 THC sip and syrup. Kevin's magic elixir is the um, the. Diet Sprite with key lime pie. All right. Now, this stuff is like THC on steroids. It's a syrup. You just mix it into any beverage, tea. Uh, they do recommend the white soda uh, with as little as a teaspoon. Okay. Fast onset, 5 to 15 minutes. Uh, Kev's friends, he was telling us last week, were uh, at first maybe not feeling it and then had another half a teaspoon and were off to the races. Um, of course, use this responsibly. Um, uh, do not travel. Do this when you're home. You're sitting down. Yeah, you're ready you to definitely chill. need to need to to start with just the the the, the, t- the teaspoon and 
See, because yeah, see where you go. You, but if you're if you're tolerant, it's like my I got some buddies, man. Just to, to, I mean, they smoke they smoke weed like cigarettes. So it was more than a teaspoon uh, for them. Yeah, so you needed a little bit more. Well, because it goes right to your bloodstream, as you know, Kevin, yeah. bypassing the breakdown of the liver. So it works like alcohol. And uh, this is not gas station Delta 8 bullshit, okay? This is the real deal. THC Delta 9, the THC you get from marijuana. If you're in Maryland, stop by the Stay Lit Smoke Shop. But for the rest of us, it's legal to ship from the Get Blitzed website to all 50 states without a med card as long as you're over 21. And right now you can save 15% by entering the code CLICK, K-L-I-Q, at checkout. Let Mickey and uh, Courtney know that we sent you. So go to get-blitzed.com. That's get-blitzed.com. And um, try that Delta 9 THE sip and serve. And uh, use very, that promo code CLICK. Very uh, good for this time of year when you start getting the upper respiratory problems and everything else going on, and you don't need to be ingesting smoke. This is a... A nice way to get that, uh, yeah, little El Buzzo on. Yeah, I you took the possibly... four, I took the four, I took the four and eight teams. I thought they would get fucking wiped out, and they ended up covering. So uh, <clears throat> not only covering, they won outright, which is which is always nice. Um, but so it, you know, I so I watched I watched Raw, and I don't care what anybody says. The number one. Um, these are some things that, uh, have been brought to my attention. Like punk is selling fucking merchandise. Like, you know, Tony, Tony Montana fucking moved cocaine. I think he did $600,000 worth of merchandise, (laughs) like the first 24 hours Mm -hmm. that he came back. So, and I think I find myself. Um, I, I watched SmackDown last Friday because I knew he was going to be on. And, um, that was the reason I watched because I wanted to see, I, I wasn't, well, it's I was working. Yeah. I'm mean, just saying I was, but I wasn't gangbusters over his initial interview that he cut. I was like, oh. but at the same time, man, I'm just like, like everybody else is I always look at it from the standpoint of fucking standing back there in Gorilla at that curtain and that fucking, your song hits, you're CM Punk, you haven't fucking said a word on that fucking stage in 10 fucking years and you're going to walk out there and you're going to cut a promo. That's, I mean... Fuck. I don't care who you are. That's fucking, that's, that's a lot of fucking, and and when you take that into, like, a lot of people were like, I don't know, but I'm thinking, like, it's a lot of fucking, a lot of pressure that he's going out there, you know. So, um, you know, he, he had the, the, the the Friday thing, and then, then Monday, he came back out, and but I thought I thought it was a really good job that they did uh uh that Paul did in him showing up at Raw, showing up at SmackDown, and then basically saying he was going to NXT to see Sean uh Michaels, then he would come back to Raw the following Monday and make his decision of who he's gonna sign with. So by doing that alone, it brought the NXT brand up because he would he was going to listen to what what Sean had as an offer, mm-hmm. you know. And I thought that I thought that was brilliant because when when I listened to it, I was just like. And then he he went out. He did the thing. He had the Bret Hart uh, hoodie on, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and he did the thing with Sean. And um, if you're going to say you're, you were the you're the best in the world, you need to show the, that man some respect because most of us that have been in the ring with Sean consider him the best that's ever you know, that's ever done that. Mm-hmm. You know, as far as just the the best worker. So 
kudos to, to that whole situation. Then he came back and he had, you know, and then uh, Seth freaking Rollins got into his face. Well, before Seth even comes out, so he does, he does what I thought was a good promo. The Cleveland stuff was fun. You know, referencing Cleveland and the story with Cleveland, and I, I thought if he would have took a Stephen Cleveland steamer right there, well, DeSantis could have mapped it from <laughs> mapped it from or a just drone. maybe maybe got like laid underneath a, a fucking like a, a a long glass table and have like somebody shit on top of the table, right? Some classy like that. Okay, um, but now, but don't I see? I thought we're still with. Punk with the apologizing and the burying ghosts, righting wrongs, and uh, do we need it again? Like he's so fucking over. Okay, he could he could have come out and stomped puppies and still got the pop. He doesn't need to be apologizing anymore. He doesn't need. He's still got a fucking locker room full of people, man. That he's walking in and fucking moving to the like. Did you give a shit when you went to WCW? Did you give a shit that you guys were walking to the front of the pack when you guys were lighting up Nitro, igniting the Monday Night Wars? Did you? Well, we when we went back to WCW when you went to WCW after when you you jumped, were you saying? You you know, there's a locker room full of guys. Hold on, hold on. Let's 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 really think about this because this is what people don't fucking remember. For fucking six weeks, we did, we did, Scott came down, I came down. Then after that, for six fucking weeks, all we did was show up for fucking 15 seconds in a portal and had a fucking spotlight hit us. The crowd would erupt and we'd be gone. That's all we did. We did, we weren't in the fucking ring. All right, so it was designed as a buildup, but still, you got in the ring. It Eventually, became the hottest, it became the hottest angle in wrestling and in WCW. Were you guys, just based on what you said about Punk, I'm honestly asking, were you guys talking about your concern for other people that have been there for a long time? That you're walking right to the front of the line and getting that hot TV we, time at the top of the uh, nine o'clock. We hour. we had to. There wasn't. There was. There was nobody else that could be the top two guys that were leaving the other company. We weren't. We weren't. We weren't fucking fired from WCW, and then walking around and then having a story saying that we were in the fucking parking garage at TV, and we were here and we were there. We fucking. We 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 did the curtain call, fucking, then showed up to a week and a week later, completely. And, and and our job was to be to look like. I mean, that was our job. You, we couldn't fucking come out and fucking say, "Hey, I, I just want to say before we fucking start hitting guys with bats, so we we don't have any fucking animosity over the fucking diamond stud and Oz push." I'm just saying that this is a business of opportunity. And you grab it with both hands, and I don't think you worry about the rest of the locker. I think you, I think you, I think you better worry about the rest of the locker room. <clears throat> well, but by doing his segment, he didn't take anyone else's time. They wrote him a segment. Oh, I, I'm just saying he's Phil is is Phil is walking on fucking eggshells. But they're writing this for him, Kev. Right? Like he's not deciding I, to say I'm sorry again. They're I don't know. Giving him that, right? I, I, I just, I don't, I don't see him. If he doesn't feel comfortable in in, in, in the verbiage, I just don't see him. Fucking, I, I think a lot of that's just. Uh, he's just. I think he's a fucking. He, he goes on method. Goes on meth. On method. Method. Oh. <clears throat> um. What is? What all right. So I'm getting here? a news flash here. The uh, context on Seth Rollins and CM Punk's Raw promo not having a producer. Is is that to mean, I don't have time to read an article, but is that to mean that nobody wrote anything? It would have to have been would... agreed to beforehand. Can't put them on live TV and not know what's going to be said. I, I, not to have a producer means that it, that it came from, from the boss. 
Oh, I see. Okay. That's Triple H. Right. I guarantee you, Paul sat them both down and, and told them, because Paul is not going to fucking, Paul is going to micromanage just because it's that important. Mm-hmm. He's not going to, he's he's doing this, the Soderbergh. He's putting his eye on the fucking lens because he knows exactly what he wants shot. He's not going to fucking tell some other person, hey, this is, this is what these guys need to, to do. Do you think, since we're mentioning Paul, do you think they missed an opportunity in WWE to do something kind of shooty and cool here? I do, smart? but then I, I I do, but at the same time, it's just not needed. But so we're getting a wrestling angle between Seth Rollins and CM Punk. But what I if don't know. what if when Did, he when came he said back, I hate, when I hate you, it's like and he they, hates it, him. It's far less compelling to me. The two guys in the ring saying they hate each other. Then if if at the press conference, what if Paul didn't say, we change in 10 years? What if he said some shit like, uh, like uh, you know Paul what? Wouldn't... I let him back from money because it's box office. I don't want him here. I don't appreciate no. what he did. That's not I'll, Paul. I won't respect him. And if he gets shut down in the first 60 days on the first pay-per-view, that's it. He's gone. No. Playing off of when he left, I just nope. feel it's it would. This just seems very orchestrated, right? As opposed to that, as opposed to yeah, him as opposed to his... fucking Paul cutting no, a no, not promo? in an angle, not in an angle, no, 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 not like that, not like oh, I'm gonna shut him down, but just say, listen, it's business. I let him back for the for the money. We have to. Republic company was the right thing to do. You guys, so want to so see let me him. ask you a question. I don't appreciate what so he let did. Let me ask you a question. Do, does Paul and then Cole Cabana does, does a run in? Does does Paul run-in. have to fucking say that for you to fucking realize that that's why he's back? No, but but the, see here and everybody <laughs> work and 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 the, oh, the, it just would have been a little more compelling if he kind of came back as the if bastard pa- child, the redheaded stepchild. Paul wouldn't have said a fucking word and then came out on fucking Monday and said, "I just want to say that a lot of people were wondering, you know, why we fucking let CM Punk." back and just wanted to tell you here's here's some fucking here's some merchandise numbers um absolutely he, he sold six hundred. He, he, he sold six hundred thousand dollars worth of merch and all we had was one t-shirt so that is be, that's before the hoodies and everything else that we, we threw out this week and um the 18 fucking seats that we that were obstructed we also sold those right for raw you know, right. I mean, it's, it's, I it's, would have, you know, and saying the that, bottom, and I, the bottom line of this, it means even when he walked in the back, when punk walked in the back and he bumped into Kofi and he said, oh, Kofi's like, I'm not, I'm not doing that Jamaica man thing anymore. And then he fucking, uh, you know, he walked by fucking, uh, Damien and, and the crew, like, like everywhere he goes, it's, it, it just, it's, it's very compelling. And then you have, like, he kind of disappears off the show. And then now you've got that, like, hour block of different fast, things. Of, of fast forwarding is what that's called. Well, I, it, I'm, I'm just saying, man, it's just. It's one of those deals where that's where all of a sudden, man, that fucking three hour, that fucking watching Avatar Titanic every fucking Monday, you go, oh. And it's just, it's it's hard. I mean, but I'm 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 saying one thing for sure is it's like having Becky and Nia. I think having that confrontation helps. Like the more confrontations that they can build. You know, I think right now I think that the like the, the women is they're they're weaker than they've been in a long time. You know, mm-hmm. and I don't know how how, how I mean I saw uh, some clips of, of Charlotte taking a pretty nasty fucking bump. Looked like she fucking got rocked. But wasn't that always the case when when wrestling programming started? And of course, it started with the Monday Night Wars when they started coming off hot at the top of the show. 
so hard to follow. I mean, I remember watching Nitro or bouncing back and forth between Nitro and Roy or taping one or the other. And, you know, NWO would get out of the ring or, or Austin and Rock would get out of the ring on the other channel. And then it was like, it was like disco versus Alex Wright doing the dancing and fucking, you know, it was like, oh, you wait. Maybe maybe so, there was something hot in there. Maybe luchadors would get in and do something fun. But See, I, I think we, I, I think that um, what, what made Nitro so fucking strong early was we didn't come out a lot of times at the beginning of the show. At they nine, would, you'd come out. They, they would be the we, eight o'clock because you weren't up against yeah. WWE. You'd come out at nine. We'd come out at nine. Yeah. But that first hour was, you know, it was, you know, Eddie and D- and Dean and Ray and mm-hmm. Hoovy. And I mean, it was, you that know, was good s- stuff. Ultimo- yeah. Some of the best, the, some of the best wrestling you w- w- you'll see in, in your life. And they'd be and planting then, seeds, showing NWO get to the building and stuff. They'd be building yeah, up till nine. They, they, it, was, they would, it was well done. Yeah, and, but, but it, it, after that's, that, I mean, to, to me, it's it, it's it, it's that ten o'clock, you know, that ten o'clock spot. Like this is one thing that 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 I I've you know the uh, by the time they got to Cody, Ooh. it was like fuck them, that that crowd was was done, and Cody tried a couple times, so, you know he. he was putting a hold. I don't think that it, it just they didn't come. You know, it was, Kevin. Even the entrance, I didn't hear anybody under his music. It, it couldn't was, they pump some production in? I just thought it made nah, it look so can't. flat. Why couldn't they pump in some crowd? Because it, it's it, in the truck. It, it's fucking live, man. You could do that. No, nah, you fucking you can't. You shouldn't have to shouldn't have to but <laughs> the the punk stuff up front was so hot by the time they got to cody it's, and i was going to ask you pointedly in this show where is cody right now if you're if you're uh on creative there it's is there such a thing as mid card anymore i mean it, oh he's definitely not mid card well you have you know, all right you I have mean, drew all right go ahead okay so, where heels, do you think he is? Where is he in the whole thing? Heels. His problem right now is he's just not in there with a heel that's over. No, but he's getting blinded two weeks in a row. I I think that's a bad call. Like the dumb baby face thing. The, like the only thing on that's an worse than that is that is the is the two brothers that, that came down to save him. After he got spit in his face, they they run down the tag team from from NXT that they're oh, high yeah. on, and then fucking the, the, the dude comes down and fucking all the way back from the curtain and stomps him again between them. You know, it's like I just think that once you bring, um, like Punk has has that same kind of it factor that's that steve has you know that that, steve kaufman our producer yeah stone cold stone cold steve kaufman okay so um but uh i just think that that punk has that um kind of every man kind of fucking deal that works Mm -hmm. and you know, there are a lot of people that, uh, you know, that are, I think, saying like, well, he's kind of a watered down version and he's kind of, a, but <clears throat> to me, it's just like, if this doesn't work out for him, where the fuck does he go? For Cody? No, for fucking, for Punk. Oh, it, it's going to work. It doesn't work out. I mean, no, well, I mean, no, it, they have, they could stretch this. But forever. I'm just saying, though, that that's so that that that's why he's apologetic to the point of fucking maybe being a little too uh, apologetic, you know. And, and he, he's home. He's, you know what, man? If my house down the fucking beach, uh, 
gets destroyed, like the one that's 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 missing Across next to mine. From you, yeah, yeah, and the one that's missing up the street from that, and the one that's missing three houses down from that. Like, if that fucking house is gone, guess what? This fucking condo, this will be my home, and I'll be glad to be fucking home because I won't have no fucking other home down here. Mm-hmm. So you know. But with Cody right now, it's like in you got two main events at WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. Is he in? Is he in the? Is he in your top four pieces of talent right now? Well, he's the main event of the second, right? Where's um, Where's Orton? Where's Where's Reigns? Where's well, Punk? that's the, but that's the thing. That's where's what I'm asking you. Rollins, where's with the amount I, of top of the card talent, depending on how hot Drew can get, right? You know, so but that, that those are the problems Paul fucking wants and needs, right? Put me in charge of creative and give me eight top guys, and I've got to figure out which four fit the best to fucking fill my WrestleMania top. Then it becomes, fuck, man. It, you, there's, you've got two main events uh, each night. And that's before you even throw in fucking, you got the, the tag belts. You've got, you, you can you can heat up Damien anytime you want. He's got the money in the bank. So, I mean, his work's fucking solid. He's, he's good sized. He's fucking definitely can, can, can can talk so he's you can fire him up anytime you want to well would you have all right you you mentioned the the um the nakamura like putting him with nakamura and being blind and nakamura man remember when nakamura fucking was used to come out to that like i mean he was super over but what's the thinking what what's what why was that? I have a hard time Monday. with a guy in fucking a, in, in a latex bodysuit to fucking wrap into some, some near, re, re, rear naked chokehold to a sweating guy and me believe that he, there's a chance that he's going to choke him out in a, in a in a slippery latex suit. I I'm just sitting there going this, and then Cody had him in the fucking and like a, a sharpshooter type gimmick, and it was just like, like fucking like jack his ass back in the middle. Like if you don't have the people, fucking jack him back in the middle and see if you can get him and make him fucking crawl like 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 work, you know, work to see if you can get him. But they just and he there was one time there Cody started and they started to come a little bit. They started to come a little bit. And then fucking boom, he just lost him. And I just think that there was, fuck, man, they, the, the amount of singing you have to do during the course of that fucking show to be in the crowd. It's like church. I, yeah, it's, fun. it's worse than that, man. It's like, fuck, you know. Maybe Cody next week to get the heat, to, to, to get the, uh, the pop back. Maybe next week he comes in the ring. Just give him some promo time. He can apologize. Uh, he can say he's home <laughs> several dozen times, and uh, basically just kind of glad hand everybody, pat everybody on the bottom that he uh, that he passes. Maybe that'll seems to work. Seems well, he gave work. his belt away, and he and he and he not only did he give his belt away, but he gave his belt away and realized there was a, he gave it to the girl, and he looked down, he saw the younger kid, and kind of did the. And I caught it where he said, "Like I'll get you one." To the kid, like I'll I'll make sure they 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 bring you one, yeah, you know. So I mean, he's he, you know he's he does his he does a he's a good baby face. I know he is, but that's why you I'm know? saying where does he he's, stand now? Because all of a sudden, I, I just I think mean, the curtain fell only, on him two fuck, weeks ago. Man, I think that fucking he's he's you got you got to hook him up with 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 Drew. You know, it, it, the Rumble is such a great thing because. Everybody knows that the the winner that you know the the guy that wins the rumble is 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 going to wrestle Roman. Right. 
So if Drew fucking eliminates Cody, then and it's down to four, then fucking that's huge. Then it's like, you know, then it's that 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 in, in itself is an angle. Like you, you, like you, motherfucker, man! You took my dream away from me again. I'm not. I'm not gonna. I, because that's the whole thing. It's as a babyface. It's always gonna be the babyface in the chase. He's just. He's being uh, blindsided right now by somebody that's not worthy to be blindsiding his push. That's just my opinion. And just because, and Nakamura was was super over it at a point where he used to come out to like electric violin shit and the fucking lights. And I mean, he was like he was like like nobody's business. But you know, that was lightning in a bottle. It's gone. And <coughs> well, you mentioned the Rumble. And I'm glad you did because if you want to attend the Rumble, everybody listening, I want you to give. Game time a shot to get you those tickets. GameTime.co if you're on your laptop. But uh, easiest way to do it, drop that Game Time app on your phone. Boom. And you can browse for tickets to anything in your area. Um, it's a very smart system. The uh, It's coded so well. Um, it finds things in your area and suggests them. Or you could just search out something specific. Um the uh, they have arena maps. Uh, you can click the seat uh, that you want. What we're looking at here, if you're watching the show, we're looking at the forum. Um, we're looking at uh, different prices. And if you click any of those numbers, they show you the seat view from where you're clicking. So you know exactly where you're going to be. Uh, no surprises. And uh, if you redeem the code CLICK, K-L-I-Q, um, you are going to get $20 off your first purchase. They say it's the leading ticket seller for last-minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed, but you don't even have to do the last-minute thing. You can grab them right now for anything uh, that tickets are on sale for. So I want you to go get the Game Time app, create an account. I've used it. The guys here use it. It's the real deal. Use the code KLIQ. Get your $20 off for your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the code KLIQ. Click for $20 off. Download game time today. Um, can we can we pull up the Royal Rumble see what the ticket I'm sure prices are? We can. <laughs> Steve O. Stone Cold Steve Kaufman. There he is, as uh as the uh this is Stone. This is Steve Coffin and and and, uh, and Stone Cold uh, and Big Show had a, had a, had a three way. <laughs> That's not a bad there one. Goes. There you go. That's a good one there. Um. So, um, what are we looking at here? So, uh, let's see. Royal Rumble. Royal there we Rumble. Go. Here we go. Let's see. It's what do we got? Let's see. Retry. Steve got an error on it there. Tropicana Field. It's a so, Tropicana. So best deal. I'm seeing best Hold deal. On. Is it a Tropicana Field in Tampa? Uh, the 27th. Yeah, uh, January 27th. Oh fuck! I... You gonna swing over? Yeah. Fuck yeah. Look at that. 157 bucks. That's the cheapest. Uh, uh, I seat fucking might run in. Million. 319. You might do a run in. Um, look Fuck, at that. I... What great deals. Guys, go could grab your game time. 157, 164, 166. Very, very affordable for WWE pay per view. That stadium. Yeah, but there. were they in that big ass stadium? Fuck. <laughs> 313. There's not a bad seat in the house, I hear, at Tropicana. We, we don't have we, we don't have a, a schematic of the of how it's going to be laid out. Steve, Steve's Wi Fi oh, there is something uh, went yeah, something went glitching. wrong. But um, it's yeah, like that, so like it's, it's like that Obama movie. Check Fucking it out. Being, oh yeah, being, what's it called again? Uh, the... Being hacked. I um, didn't watch it. I wanted to talk about it. We'll watch. We'll talk. About I'll it next get week. it. I'll get to it. Yeah, eventually. fuck you. Yeah, just like uh, Berserker or whatever that one was. Barbarian. Oh, what I, was I it, watched, Wes? I watched the trailer for that twice. Wes, what, what, Wes, what was the movie that we watched? 
Barbarian. It was, it was yeah. barbarian. Yeah, you fucking I knew what you piece meant. of shit. I knew what you meant. Yeah, you, 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 you're so fucking highbrow. You, you and your fucking... What, you sit, sit around and watch fucking... You, what? You watch Woody Allen films. What you, you say, you're going to start posting on YouTube uh, <laughs> any moment now. Um, I didn't even finish reading my favorite YouTube uh, quotes of the week. Uh, swoosh. Swoosh. Yeah, six, see, Wes, even Wesley says that Barbarian is better than Leave the World Behind. So that's... And Wesley and I are both, I think, film film noir fucking kind of cats. So, All right, I, I can't. I'm done with the YouTubes. <laughs> and it's time for Ask Nat. And how do we do that? Very simple. Very simple. Hashtag Ask Nash on the socials. Or join ClickThisTV.com and you get to be here live for the taping and ask questions, as you'll see in just a few moments. But Rocky Monroe is up first. Uh, Kevin Nash, have you heard the theory that Benoit was framed? And do you think WWE should always act oblivious to his career at this point? He was extremely skilled and accomplished a lot. His son wants to wrestle, but is probably blacklisted because of his name. It's addressed to you, Kevin, but this is just a this is a no brainer for me. The fucking guy murdered his small child and wife. I think we can live without knowing he gave a great fucking suplex because I think that outshines anything, outshines, overshadows anything he ever did. In yeah, the I haven't seen the NFL fucking content. do uh, any homages to O.J. Simpson. Yeah. Uh, Joe. And I, and I personally, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I never had, you know, I never had a, a, anything but, but, Kindness and and uh, good work environment with Chris. I mean, it's just. But it's a good thing you didn't get murdered by him. No, I mean it's you know it's it just it's he was a fucking he was a dead. He, he lost Eddie, and I think that that was like me losing Scott. And I just I, I just think he spiraled and. I don't know. I just say. Where are you on the um, the uh, concussion CTE contributing to? Well, they say that, like the, that 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 the worst, you know, that of of all the the uh, CTE uh, injuries that you can have, uh, the worst one is the brain hitting the. the, the front of your helmet you know like those you know so in other words anytime you land on your chest that's worse for your neck and your brain your brain stem because you've got that natural curve in your neck that goes you know backwards you know Mm -hmm. got like a c curve in your neck so when you land this way that force of your brain because it's got more it's got more room to fucking to 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 whiplash and and hit that uh hit the skull and you figure his fucking finish for 20 years was that flying head head mm-hmm. gimmick off the top so uh, you know i'm, I'm, I'm garrett and, and you know he worked a lot of years in japan and he there's a guy that you know never took a match off never took a night off so I just, I, I got, when it happened, well, I guess after it happened, and you started to hear about CTE, and it would, I, I just, I got very annoyed, because I thought it was almost trying to scapegoat the business, which thousands of men and women have been in, and didn't kill their family, I felt it was almost like trying to scapegoat the business a little bit and the danger and the injuries, which are real, in addition to the money and the miles, for for this horrendous act that many people had concussions. NFL linemen in the, in the 60s and 70s that were far less protected with equipment and, and rules uh, than they are now who have not killed their families just thought it was it was taking some of the responsibility away from that fucking guy that did that. 
So I got a little annoyed when that when that CTE discussion would start. There's some science to it, of course, of the lingering injuries, but you no. Know, yeah. To me, it's it, it's it's like what's you know the, the it's like what's going on right now in the Middle East. You know, it's just no matter how you look at it, Hamas <clears throat> still fucking sucks. You know, like that's like what he did was was brutal. What Hamas did is brutal, and this was What's almost that? like you took a bet that you that you would n- not be able to go the whole show and, without and bringing talk, and up talk Gaza politics. and without, without Gaza and we, we the Chris Benoit question for Christ's sake uh, t- invoked t- t- the yeah, Hamas. We, we went the entire show without talking politics. Joe, but I only I only uh, I only said Hamas. So Joe says in the Punk episode, Nash said his match with Punk didn't happen due to Triple H wanting to beat Punk. Previously, I'd heard Nash had an injury, which is why uh, they pivoted to Triple H. Are both true? Big fan of you and Kevin. The show, keep up the good. No, I didn't have an injury. No injury. Okay. Brian, it was, I, I, I'm just. It just baffles me that like people, you know, oh, well, nobody said he didn't open the car door. Well, listen, you, you're you're adding the inflection, but. But this is this is good. People bring up things they've heard, the rumor mill, and this is where you set them. No, well, they they said that um, I, I had to I couldn't wrestle because I was on Plavix. That was that was the reasoning that they came up with. That was the the, the, the medical. I was on Plavix, which they said was a blood thinner, and Plavix, and and he said you know, they asked me why I was on Plavix, and I said, well, I said. <clears throat> my father had a heart attack. I said, you know, Plavix is an, and what Plavix is, is an anticoagulant, which doesn't allow the, you know, your, your, especially I've got a negative blood, which is a thicker, uh, thicker blood. And, um, but they were, they were, allowing, you had that before the Borg Genesis shot or that was a result. That was before the Borg Genesis. Now I, I, I I'm, I'm going to have to, I'm getting ready to, to have blood done like mid January. So I'm, I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see, cause I've been like an idiot going in there, just getting my regular blood done. I'm going to say, and can I get the Borg Genesis panel? Right. Uh, Let's see what we'll shows see. up. Yep. Right. Different, different human. Uh, Brian says, uh, Hey Sean, am I the ultimate Jersey guy when I've met, one of your Jersey guy, Florida man subjects. Well, of course you are, but uh, you got to tell us. Uh, you're please, leaving out a detail. Please, please tell us it's the guy that was a masturbating and fighting 24 cops. <laughs> uh, it was 14. Can you not exaggerate, please? <laughs> Whatever. I would take him. I would take the, the one that destroyed the nativity scene while fucking a dog. <laughs> He's heroic. He won the tournament last year. You'll remember yeah. the, the March Madness tournament, which is you know, it's coming yeah. up in a few months. You so enjoyed every week, Kevin, when we used to have to vote oh, through the, the, um, the fucking whole the, uh, fucking replay. Um, it, gave me how about to, some, it gave me something to bitch about. Give, give, me, give me some live audience questions, Steve. Uh, Mark DZ, not going to get too personal, but how'd you meet your wife, big guy? If you answered this before, I apologize. I missed it. I don't think you did answer it. No, I just, after the third time of asking her to put the, lo- put the lotion in the basket, she decided to. Uh... Dug a little pit, a <laughs> little, little pit in the house, had her down there. Yeah. Yeah. Buffalo Bill. Now you. you... I met her, I met her at the gym. I met her at the gym. And she did not like me. I was a big fucking muscle head. Right. So what? Uh, how did you woo her? I'm a, with, I'm a, with your I was a, schedule. I was a I was a muscle head that bounced at a strip joint. That's right. Like a, that checks a I, lot I of t- boxes. I, I, I took her. I took her. I, 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 I told you the story. I took her to lunch at the uh, High Museum at, at Atlanta. There was uh, Monet water lilies, mm-hmm. and she was just like, "Oh, so maybe he's not the douchebag." Frankenstein dolt that I thought he was, but I'm saying this is you were working right. You were you were this was uh your 
the no fuck no that this was no 80, you we got married in 88 right i was I oh wasn't. you were doing did you do the movie you were doing no. the movie so you were already married when i saw that picture of you and her that was turtles that's 90 that was turtles okay Uh, what else we got? Jen Vargo. How did you, uh, how did your neck get after your stem cells finally? No, you said your shoulders were really good. My neck, you know, like every, my hand, my, my, um, left hand, like still has a little bit of, uh, of numbness in it, but I think that's more carpal tunnel from just lifting for so long because when i really like stretch my shit out and 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 do all my carpal tunnel stretching that goes away so um no I, my neck is and i also man it's just like through trial and error i went through like a billion pillows and i finally found a pillow that that kind of fits my head i guess this isn't mark lindell's my pillow that you settled on no 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 this is i, I can't even think of what this but it, tamara and i both I, I i got my i bought myself one. i said fuck i said i'm gonna buy her one too and she said the same thing it's just like wow like you know what a difference like a proper pillow makes 100 percent. the only one that i've consistently and i use it to this day my wife ordered this thing called the cube. I know and what that one is. It's like just like a square block, and uh, I guess it just kind of. Do you sleep on your side? Me. I'm a total slide side sleeper. Yeah, that's that, the that. See, I start and fall asleep like on my back. So the cube, like it was, it didn't work for me right. on my back. But this one is, it's measured. Like my my like my sides are about that. Like if you, yeah, but my my sides are like that first one. <coughs> so what if I when I roll out of that little cook, I'm I, 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 my my head goes on that and my shoulders. You know, that's my biggest problem is my shoulders are so wide. That's true too. Yeah, you'd need like two cubes. You'd have to pile yeah. two of those on top of each other. Ah, uh, what else we got here in the house? Let's get somebody else up here. That's normal. Josh, hey Josh, welcome back. Has Kevin ever had knee surgery or replacement? Woof. What did you have? Sixteen? I'm gonna say. Fuck, I had the I had seventeen on just my right knee. The seventeenth being the replacement. I think I've had nine on my left. Seventeen and nine. So yeah, Josh, you got a lot of catching up to do, to brother, 26. with your knee replacement on the nineteenth. Uh, 26 in the operations. That's ridiculous. That's amazing. Only two, three, six majors where they had to, like, cut me open. Right. The rest are scopes. That's obviously, that that's the, the most common basketball player surgery, right, is the knee. Because mm -mm. of the a the size, you're running the entire game and and you're jumping, coming down on people's feet all the time. Uh, Rocky Monroe, uh, I find myself listening to older music as most current music sounds like generic garbage. Do you recommend any current hard rock or metal? I'm a big Metallica fan. Rocky Monroe, you know the only current you don't listen to a lot of current. You know I did like um, Greta Van Fleet. I know they got a lot of guff because they sound very much like Led Zeppelin. But you know what? Led Zeppelin's been gone for 50 years. So if somebody else comes along and can, with fidelity, sound like Zeppelin did, I'm all down for it. I saw a thing on Instagram today. Some guys he named, like, who was it? I said Pink Floyd was old people music. Um, oh, fuck. I mean, I know the Beatles were... He like named like four like you know, uh, the Doors, and it was like a younger kid, and I was like, I, I watched it, and you know, we talked about the Doors last week, mm -hmm. and I just, 
I don't know why. It was just one of those things where I said, you know what? Fuck it. Fuck this guy. I just blocked him. <laughs> like, I, I never want to hear this guy's opinion on anything ever again. So, Dick, you're, 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 you're gone. Like, I'm thinking, like, ah, you, you can't live in my, my, my airspace. Someone brought up uh, a minute ago that they saw Greta Van Fleet open for Pearl Jam. That's a good bill, man. That, that I would have seen that. And then uh, what did Britt say? Britt said that she's 27 and her playlist looks like an 80-year-old's playlist. Who do you got on there? We got a little Ella. A little uh, little P-Funk. Catman. Cat uh uncaged rage kevin sean today i was supposed to have moved into my new apartment but unbeknownst to me there's no keys to the unit this thursday will be my 23rd birthday and this apartment was a birthday gift to myself i've spent over two grand on it just to be fucked over well rage i think that i mean that's your landlord you got to call your landlord for the key what like can't sell you a place and then not give you a key to it right so find him tell him you know nash and we're gonna send him to straighten shit out if he doesn't give you the key all right let's wrap it up with someone from the audience here a couple from the audience what do we got who else anyone new let's get some some newbies up here the hollywood crypt keeper for christ's sake nash any new movie roles coming up still wait on uh because that that pacino there's a pacino uh stallone movie that's was in the works and now the basketball with this, one right yeah the, with Syracuse? the strike yeah with the strike, um, now you've got to, you know, their their uh, their schedules. And you got to you got to oh, find it's hard. it messes for, everything up. Yeah, uh, especially those guys. Uh, who else? Anyone else? Let's see. Hollywood Crypt uh, Have you ever done a movie watch along with Nash and Friends? If not, what one would you want to watch? How about um? Sweet, sweet back. Uh, maybe one of those old uh, 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 Van Peebles films from the seventies. Uh, sweet, sweet back. Uh, what's the full title? I think Pootie Tang is always a. It's a good one. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. Get, get me someone. You got to get me. Someone's got to get me the poster for uh, Melvin Van Peebles. Uh, sweet, sweet back. Uh, uh, Something or other. That's uh, Mario Van Peebles' father, director of some of the great black exploitation films of the seventies. Um, maybe Goodfellas. I what would have been fun? I don't know. What would you have chosen to sit and watch along? Chop up. You gotta watch. You gotta watch. I mean, I don't know. Step Brothers. That's always. <laughs> All right, Brandon Douglas. Bring us home. Can you ask Kevin if he has a P.O. box? I have something for him that I was going to bring him in Columbus, but my work schedule changed, and I was un- unable to attend. If it's a if it's a 14-inch double dong dildo, you could probably keep that at home. But anything else, uh, Brandon, Kev, do you, you don't do uh, mailings, right? You don't do uh, no any of that stuff. But thank you. Brandon, we'll, we'll, we'll run it. We'll run into each other. I'm sure Columbus, uh, Ohio, I guess, or Columbus, yeah. Georgia could be. No, that's Ohio. Oh, I was, I, I, the thing was, I, I didn't end up going because I was too sick. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. people, this is what I love is, is you know, we, I didn't, I missed the show, this show. We didn't do it. You know, we waited until like fucking Sunday, whenever we yeah. did it. And um, it's just like people are like, I can't believe you know show. And I'm thinking like, Wow, I'm sorry. I how fucking selfish of me to not get on a plane and then like get everyone sick on the plane and then from there go to a convention, shake hands, get you guys take, sick, pay, get everyone I possibly can get sick. Like I don't know. I, I think part of the thing was always like you know when when, when you're sick, you stay the fuck at home. That's the way it works, guys. Um, let me remind everyone that Click This is a production of Butch and Sundance Media, produced in association with Podcast E, created by Tristan Nash, Kevin Nash, and Sean Oliver. Producer Steve Kaufman. Graphics by Dominic D'Angelo. Title sequence, audio edit, 
by Wesley Burleson, theme song by Dale Oliver, technical research by Tristan Nash, copyright 2023, Butch and Sundance Media. Kev, I'm sorry. I've changed. I'm home. Do you want to do another one? Uh, well, I, you know, I'm, yeah, yeah, sure. It's called the modern day raw promo. Never answers the thing 